Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here to join you this morning. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about an innovative piece of technology developed in the research laboratories at IBM and its potential for addressing the needs of teachers. It's called Watson. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, maybe you saw on television it won the game show Jeopardy. Well, how did it win the game show Jeopardy? Well, you loaded into a supercomputer all the information that you could possibly find about questions that could be asked. And then, by using advanced analytics and artificial intelligence, converting it into natural language, it actually won this game show on television against Jeopardy! champions. But Watson isn't a game. It's a piece of important technology that could be transformative in a whole range of activities facing people in the United States and across the planet. So right after the game show Jeopardy, we began to work with doctors, some of the best cancer doctors in the United States, oncologists, at Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital, at Cleveland Clinic, at Mayo Clinic, at MD Anderson. These doctors facing an enormous amount of pressure to provide high quality health care needed access to important information that they couldn't get access to to be able to work with patients who had cancer. All the information on clinical trials, all the information on diagnostics and treatment plans that had been done. A doctor could be a terrific doctor, but imagine if every doctor had access to that information in the way in which Watson won Jeopardy amassing ama ama amazing amounts of information, analyzing it, and being able to convert it into natural language so that a doctor could get that advice on a mobile device, easily accessible for every doctor. This is actually happening right now, and it's improving the ability of doctors to be a better doctor, to make a better diagnosis and to make a faster diagnosis, come up with a better treatment plan, and actually save lives. So Watson isn't a game. In healthcare, it's making a huge amount of difference. The question we asked is, could this Watson technology make a transformative difference in education like it is making in healthcare? So step number one was to ask teachers, ask educators, don't develop a product and send it out there, incorporate teachers and educators in a design of what Watson could do. So, thank you. So we called together a group of teachers, education leaders, and we did it at Roosevelt House, the home of Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt. Now why do that at the home of former President Roosevelt? Because it was in that house in the library upstairs that the then President of the United States, in a conversation with Frances Perkins, who became the first woman member of the cabinet in the United States of America as Secretary of Labor, they had a conversation and it was about Social Security, a transformative piece of policy change in the United States that over the last 80 years has changed people's lives. So at Roosevelt House, with educators in the room, the conversation was, how could this Watson technology improve education? People came up with a variety of ideas, uh, provide uh, information to students so that they could do better in the class, or think about testing, or think about back office technologies. But that conversation quickly turned to the issue of teachers. There has never really been a piece of technology developed in the great technology laboratories that has really focused specifically on teachers. So that's what we endeavor to do. Now I'm going to show you a very brief video, all of four minutes, will explain to you what Watson focused in on teachers could do. So let's please show the video right now. Thank you. 
Times have changed, and the demands on educators have increased. More than ever before, teachers need ongoing training, reliable support, and high-quality materials to prepare the next generation for college and career. It's not easy. There are still only 24 hours in the day. Educators need easily accessible, integrated curricular materials and dynamic solutions to help them better meet the needs of their students and enable them to achieve at higher and higher levels. Meet the first tool, powered by cutting-edge cognitive computing technology developed by teachers for teachers to provide outstanding curriculum solutions and ongoing support. Education experts, including teachers and an advisory board of renowned thinkers in education, are working with IBM Watson to focus on the professional development of today's modern educator. IBM Watson is a cognitive computing innovation that processes information similar to the way that people think and provides teachers with multiple ways of navigating and adapting curriculum and instructional resources. Unlike traditional search engines that only pinpoint standalone resources, requiring teachers to enter search after search without getting a sense of the larger context, this innovative tool is different. It features a knowledge map that instantly provides teachers a comprehensive set of interrelated concepts that students need to master on a given subject or skill. This is what a search would yield using a search engine. And this is what Watson is able to give you. This is the very credible source that we can provide for you. I don't think you would have a teacher in America that would say, I don't want to use this free resource. Educators also can access guided and supportive lesson planning tools to enrich already developed lessons and create high quality lessons and units. As teachers plan, Watson shows how concepts interrelate, providing teachers with guided assistance in planning a single problem set, a daily lesson, a unit, or a year long curriculum. People ask, why Watson now? I can't think of a time where there has been more dissension about improving education. There has not been up-to-date technology, an important technology, that has been focused specifically on meeting the needs of teachers. And I believe that this is an opportunity to, instead of focusing in on what divides us, to focus in on what unites us, building and supporting better teachers. That's what it's all about. Watson would provide pedagogical videos demonstrating master teaching, link to lesson concepts to enhance and support teacher instruction, encourage reflection, and enable teacher growth. With the four o'clock or one o'clock at night when you're planning a lesson, you know, that little piece of inspiration, just looking at her classroom and how does she conduct herself would be, just that piece would be phenomenal. The power of cognitive computing allows Watson to learn, understand, and anticipate the goals and needs of each educator. The more a teacher uses Watson, the more it provides specific advice to support their instruction and their students' diverse needs. Importantly, this resource is non-judgmental, and its advice is completely confidential. It only has one goal, to fully support teachers and their professional development. It's the next iteration of technology that most of us would never have any access to in terms of trying to give us um, uh, a really wonderful, encyclopedic, ongoing virtual resource center at our fingertips. Watson, in conjunction with the IBM International Foundation, will pilot with third grade math teachers in the fall of 2015. And thanks to the IBM International Foundation and funding partners, including the Stavros Nyarkos Foundation and the Ford Foundation, this game-changing resource will be 100% free to teachers around the world in 2016, and easily accessible on mobile devices, wherever and whenever a teacher needs help. Times have changed, but one thing remains the same. Teachers are paramount to student learning and success. Watson is committed to teacher success through the power of cognitive computing, the targeted content and advice of trusted experts, and the spark that only a great teacher can bring to the classroom. Okay, so the question was, and you saw in the video, could we do for teachers what is being done for oncologists, for cancer doctors? Could we actually build this tool for teachers? So we're calling it right now Watson Teacher Advisor. Uh, it'll have a name once it's completed. It is a clear partnership between educators, especially teachers, and the scientists in the Watson Research Lab. And 
Uh, how will they be able to do this? Well, number one, as you heard, will take all the best lesson plans, all the best content, all the best curriculum material, and load it into this supercomputer. Then we will ask questions, the questions that teachers would want answers to, and Watson Technology will be trained to provide answers to the teacher's questions, both about curriculum and about pedagogy. And the more teachers who will use this tool and ask questions, because it is artificial intelligence, it will learn and it will be more responsive and continue to be able to be more responsive to the more uh, users, more teacher users that use this technology. So it will learn, it will develop answers, and it will be this resource to teachers. Now, are there any concerns about getting teachers to use this? You heard from teachers, no teacher on the planet would not want to use this tool. But there are some things that you could do to make it more teacher friendly. So number one, make it very, very simple and easy to use. Make it accessible on a handheld device so that a teacher wouldn't have to go to a personal computer to gain access to this advisor information to help improve their teaching. Then, as you heard again, make it non-judgmental. So don't ask the teacher for their name, rank, and serial number, that the questions that they ask might be used in some other way. Make it completely confidential so teachers could trust the use of this technology as something that would benefit them with no uh, extra or unintended consequences. And finally, and this is really important, make it 100% free. This is not a product. This is something that would be developed by teachers, for teachers, with the best research scientists, and make it 100% totally free. So we will pilot this, as you heard, in the fall, beginning with early grade math. Uh, teachers will have an opportunity to learn how to use it. Use it. Thank you. And then we will add other curriculum material, other content, other information, melding curriculum and pedagogy so that it does become that advisor or mentor for teachers. Now, sometimes it's hard to explain to people what a piece of technology like this is or what it could do. But I would venture to say that many teachers in the audience have had a mentor in their life. They've had somebody that they could go to, an experienced teacher perhaps, or others that they would be able to go to if they had a question or a concern about the profession. It's a lot of pressure, it's a lot of tension, and could you get that access to a mentor? But not every teacher has that access. Watson, for teachers, would be the equivalent of resuscitating John Dewey and making John Dewey available for teachers as a mentor but you wouldn't have to call him on the phone. He would be accessible whenever you needed answers to his, the questions to make uh, your, yourself an empowered and better teacher. Now, when could that be? It could be at night, it could be in the morning, it, be, it could be before a class, it could be after a class, it could be during lunch, whenever, wherever, 24-7, 100% free, that a teacher needs access to this information. The more content we add, the more collaboration and partnership with teachers, the better it will get, and over years and years, it will become this valuable tool that teachers will want. Now, when you go back uh, to your cities and states and talk about uh, Watson and what this could do, people will say, well, I can't believe that something like this could actually happen. It sounds a little far-fetched. But there have been times in the past where a partnership between people on the technology side or in business have actually worked in collaboration and partnership to produce a significant result. I mentioned earlier President Roosevelt and Social Security. Well, when Social Security passed, the president called somebody on the phone. He called Tom Watson Sr., 
who at that point was the CEO of the IBM company. They were actually friendly. And he asked his advice on how to actually implement this piece of legislation. The federal government had never set up a system to deduct money from people's paychecks and collect it all in one method. Watson, then a human being Watson, actually helped set up and manage and operate Social Security. That was in the 1930s. That was transformative. In the 1940s, Mr. Watson, working with a group of higher education ec experts and specialists, developed something transformative, and it was called computer science, taught in every higher education institution around the United States and around the world. That Watson was transformative. In the 1960s, the President of the United States, John Kennedy, uh, made a commitment to put a man on the moon. He called a Watson, Tom Watson Jr., CEO of the IBM company, and asked for advice and support in being able to help transform NASA to be able to put a man on the moon. And that, Mr. Watson, helped. Now, both of those Watsons are no longer with us. But the Watson technology is with us. And if it can transform healthcare, if it can improve the skill and the ability of doctors, it can do the same for teachers. It can empower teachers. It can improve teachers. It can help them to be able to deliver higher quality instruction. And it can transform the lives of young people. Watson can be transformative only if we work in collaboration, in partnership, and make this happen. We can do it. We will do it with your help. This will be a transformation of education. Thank you very much.